So um, welcome all. Uh, so today, Edwin and I will tell you something more about Start My Business and the API management journey of uh, FedNot. Um, before I start, let me quickly introduce myself and then my colleague Edwin as well. So I'm Jolien. I'm already working around eight years in integration, three years of them at FedNot as a team lead and a product owner of the integration team, um, and my colleague Edwin. Hello, so I'm Edwin. Uh, I've been working uh, with APIs uh, almost 10 years, uh, and I've been working specifically at FedNot for uh, two years. So before we start, maybe uh, what is FedNot, um, who we are? Um, so actually FedNot has, has two um, yeah, different roles. Uh, we have almost 50% of the people who are in the juridical department giving advice to notaries. Um, and then we also have 50% IT who delivers actually solutions to the notaries uh, and the notary employees. Just to give you an idea, in total, we have around 1,600 notaries in Belgium and in total 10,000 uh, users of our applications. Uh, if, you count also the notary employees. Uh, and to give you a number about the number of deeds in a year, it's more than 1 million. So it's actually a, a lot. So this is a little bit what FedNot is about. Uh, the agenda for today is, uh, I would like to start with a recap of um, what we presented in 2019 and where we are today. Then something about Start My Business, and then, uh, uh, as already said, uh, the effects of a scaling API management strategy uh, at FedNot. Uh, so the recap uh, in December 2009, uh, we actually presented also um, about uh, our API journey at FedNot. At that moment, the platform uh, API Connect was just up and running. Um, and we had around five team members, uh, a few consumers already, and a few APIs. We had a lot of next steps in mind, um, and actually we managed to deliver already a few of them, like the developer portal, automated deployments, um, and also a lot of new APIs we built and new partners uh, that consume our APIs. But as you can see, some things are still in progress, um, and, and you will see uh, why, because actually, yeah, we focus a lot on business projects and delivering APIs. And because of the high demand for our team, we were not able to do that much of technical projects. And that's where we will come back into the second part of this presentation yeah, to show you how will we cope with that uh, scaling uh, of, of API, APIs and the strategy of FedNot and how do we cope with it as a team. Uh, so I would like to start, I would start my business, which is a very nice uh, platform we launched in August this year, uh, and has also a lot of APIs involved. What is Start My Business? It's actually a platform we launched for the citizen to be able to establish his company completely online and digital. Um, it is started from a European di directive that said, okay, each European citizen should be able to establish his company online. Actually, uh, in Europe, Belgium is one of the three countries who was able to deliver something by August of this year. So we're very proud as Belgium notaries that we have this platform there. Um, just to give you an idea of the architecture, um, we have a citizen platform and also a notary platform, which is, uh, of course, secured through a gateway with our backend. We also had a lot of enrichments to do, eh? like, for instance, person data, data about an enterprise, an address. And also, of course, eh, the journey doesn't stop when the deed is there. We are also able to sign the deed completely digital. And even also some other post-process um, steps where we also archive the deeds electronically in our NABAN archive and also do the UBO registration, which is necessary. Uh, just for the digital signature, we, 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 uh, we use an external platform, which is Connective, 
and uh, I hope in now it's only possible for a Belgian citizen to sign his deed, but we're now working on an extension with Swisscom to also have the availability or the possibility for a European citizen to sign his deeds. Because as you know, in Belgium, we have EID, but in Europe, not all countries have uh, that, that card or, or an easy way to authenticate and sign uh, uh, on, a, on a secure way. Um, just uh, an idea on the workflow or the steps in that process. Um, actually, uh, it starts at the citizen who is taking contact with the notary online. Uh, then they collaborate together uh, on verifying, uh, giving advice as a notary. And in the end, actually, they come to a deed that can be signed completely digital. And then afterwards, we also do the necessary registrations and the digital archiving. Uh, and of course, later also the publications and, and the registration in the KBO registers. So this is really an end-to-end -end journey for the citizen, uh, digital uh, for the constitution. Uh, actually for us uh, as FEDNOT, uh, we, we want to become a bridge that connects the citizen and the notary. Uh, uh, before uh, we only delivered actually IT solutions for notaries and notary employees but we made kind of switch to also have some citizen platforms just for notaries to, to, to get closer to that citizen. Um, you might know uh, maybe already bid it and EasyMe. Well, this is actually the third platform that we uh, yeah, developed uh, for the citizen uh, to bring the notary closer to those citizens. Uh, I, now I give the word to my colleague Edwin uh, to explain you a little bit more in detail uh, about that start, uh, my business. Yes, so um, I will go through uh, several challenges that we encountered during uh, the project. It's a project that involved many teams, so it wasn't just our team involved. And um, as with any big project, you come across challenges. Uh, and I'm going to pick out a few which I feel are uh, relevant from uh, an API management point of view. Uh, and I'm not going to give you solutions, but I do want to highlight them. So uh, when you go to your projects, you will think, ah, these are the kinds of topics that I might also want to think about. And the first uh, challenge that we encountered was actually well, the citizen, until now, we've worked a lot with uh, notaries. Uh, so notaries are able to log in and use our systems. But that hasn't been the case for citizens. We know citizens well because we, we handle citizen data, but they haven't been using our systems directly. And uh, since this is one of the first projects where we, we really interact uh, and citizens can log into our systems, we had a, a whole bunch of questions about is how do we realize this? The infrastructure for allowing citizens to connect, the security policies that we have uh, were really made for notaries originally. So we had to reassess them in order to make them usable for a new type of user, a citizen. And just because we want to make it worse, uh, it's not just Belgian citizens, we have uh, European citizens, which we need to take into consideration. Um, for Belgian citizens, we already know them very well because we have a, a very well-defined legal structure for a Belgian citizen, which we obviously use a lot. But a European citizen is a much more vague term, a new kind of user for us. Um, and uh, that made us also reassess uh, the security policies we had, um, but in terms of European citizens. Uh, an interesting concept also was uh, identity coupling, because uh, a European citizen could be a dual national citizen, could also be Belgian, and how we link those identities together uh, was uh, a complicated security consideration uh, that we had to work through. 
Um, another, uh, possibly this subject is, is uh, very specific to FedNOT because at FedNOT, we have development teams which are responsible for both our backend and often our front end development. And historically, this ended up giving lots of APIs that were actually closely coupled to the front end, uh, meaning that when we had a new type of consumer, we often had to create a, a new API in order to accommodate them. So a strategy we've been trying to apply, and we really took it into consideration for this project as well, is to ensure that we have one API which we can reuse for all the different types of consumers. So in our project, we had notaries and citizens. Many of the operations that they can do are the same. There are, of course, a few things that only a notary can do and only uh, a citizen. But uh, we ensured that the majority could be shared uh, in the back end, having just one API for the back end, which we then exposed in slightly different variants towards the consumers. For all of our citizen facing uh, applications, uh, we have been concerned about uh, the scaling ability uh, of our on premise solution, uh, and we have opted for Google Cloud Platform. That brings us into this hybrid scenario. Uh, it's a topic which is uh, seen a lot at many different clients, eh? and it's uh, and also now at FedNot. Uh, it's a bit newer for FedNot, but it really shows that the future is going to be uh, hybrid. And that means we, again, have to reassess our security policies. Until now, we've, we've had a very clear internal security policy and an external security policy. Well, the cloud is a kind of gray area because it's still under our control, but it is definitely also external. So uh, we will have to set up uh, a new kind of policy for cloud applications. For this project, we were able to uh, define it as an external um, application and we're able to use those policies, but that's not something that will happen that we will be able to continue for long. So we will be looking to set up um, policies for cloud applications. So integration, so you saw the architecture, uh, Yulin shared that earlier. We have many, many different systems, some of which I have listed here. Integration with those systems has been very easy. Uh, so since it's all standardized, uh, we were able to plug into those functionalities, those uh, services very easily. And actually we even uh, requested one of the services for notary information to implement a new uh, search method, some, some extended functionality for that service. They implemented it for us and actually other applications within FedNOT are uh, actually also interested in that new search method. So it's showing that uh, by having this uh, ecosystem, we're able to keep providing more value uh, to our services that we have. Um, a challenge that we had towards other teams is um, explaining how we could work together with them. We have uh, for a long time had an API first policy. Um, many of the developers from the name assumed that this was some kind of waterfall process. And of course, they're much happier working in uh, agile uh, sprints. Uh, and we're worried how that we could work together with them in a way that we remain uh, agile. So we had to, we actually made a, a, a presentation in which we gave to the other development teams to show how 
we could apply this API first policy while still working in, a, in an agile manner. Um, that kind of uh, cultural uh, aspect of the um, of our API strategy as a whole is very important to get the other teams on board and working together with us. Another challenge we faced was compatibility. So actually we use very many tools. So I've listed a, a few on this slide, but there's a, a whole host of different applications we use and they might all have slightly different compatibility. Uh, even though we're still talking about REST APIs, they might have a bug so that this particular functionality doesn't work or a functionality might be very complicated and might require too much effort in order to implement it. We need to take those things into account when we create our APIs. And in order to do so, we set up a kind of, uh, we added lists, uh, sorry, we added rules to our contract design standards so that we work around the limitations of the technologies that we use at FedNOT. In the architecture slide, you also saw at the bottom a digital signature platform. Uh, that was uh, an API or a platform developed by the integration team. It's really the first application that our team has been responsible for. And um, it was a very big dependency for this project. So we learned a lot about what the other teams uh, also have to worry about when they create their platforms. Um, but we were able to deliver it. It's, it's quite a complicated um, platform, but was crucial for ensuring that we could complete the signing process digitally uh, rather than on paper. And then lastly, after we sign, we have a post deed process. So we register the deed and we give some information back to the, the person who's made this company, like what is their company number. Uh, those workflows actually already existed. So we were able to plug into these existing workflows in order to provide the, the functionality we need. And again, that was really easy because they've been designed uh, in a way that we can consume them uh, from our processes. Thank you, Edwin. Um, I would love to give you a small demo um, of the platform st Start My Business for the Citizen. Um, so just uh, to give you an idea, as, as Edwin already said, um, we needed to cope also with European citizens. So also for the authentication of the platform, you will see uh, it's me and EID, what, which we already know. And for the European authentication, uh, we work together with IDAS um, to, to get the European citizen also on our platform. I will use my It's Me account uh, in a test environment just to show you a small de demo. So this is the Start My Business uh, platform for the citizen. As you can see here, you can get an overview of your constitution, so you can have multiple ones. I already prepared one, uh, which is the API uh, company of FedNOT. Uh, and here you can already see your dashboard um, where you have different um, things that you should do uh, before you can come in a phase where you can have a draft deed. Uh, as you can see here, you can online uh, chat with your notary and ask questions. You can uh, see here what is already done and what is still to be done by you 
or with you together with the notary. There is some general information about your company. Of course, you also have the people, uh, the founders, shareholders, signers uh, for, for the deed itself. And of course, based on this information about the shareholders and the founders, we can also do automatically an, an, an UBO registration for the company. Uh, also, of course, what is important is the finance part uh, of the fiscal year and the share structure. You also have some obligatory documents to upload here uh, um, to, to be able uh, to, to establish your company. And then, of course, uh, it comes to the end where you can download your deeds, see a draft and really chat with the notary if you still have some things to add in that deed. Uh, and then afterwards, indeed, you go to an, an, another platform uh, to do a video conference with your notary and to actually sign the deed. I will just quickly uh, update here uh, a social objective just to show you um, that it gets green and when you finish it. So uh, I would like to open a, a company in consultancy. Uh, so I can pick here consultancy, safe. And when I go back to the dashboard, you will see uh, it ends up green. So yeah, this is really a, a nice uh, platform that we built for the citizen. The notaries have separate other view. I will not demo it here. But if you're interested, I'm, I'm happy to talk about it on another moment. Um, uh, before we go to the next part, uh, which is the, the effects of scaling, uh, I would just like to tell you that if you have questions, we will answer them at the end of the session and that you can already ask them in the Q&A. Uh, so if you already have questions now after the first part, don't hesitate to already put your questions there and Edwin and I will be very happy to answer them at the end. So a small conclusion. Uh, um, the Start My Business platform uh, doesn't stop here. We really want to make it an ecosystem with other partners involved. And therefore, of course, APIs will come in the picture again. Um, as you know as well, uh, we, we, uh, we process a lot of private data. So also security is something that we reassess constantly. Um, also hybrid infrastructure, uh, this is the future and we should uh, cope with it and, and see what's the best way to deal with it. And next to that, what's also, what was also important for us and for our consumers was that we scheduled really our releases. So they know uh, when releases will be done in production, in acceptance, and, and we can better plan it up front. Um, this brings me to my next topic. Uh, the center of excellence, uh, the effects of scaling an API management strategy at FedNot. Um, actually, you see me there sitting, <laughs> not that happy, having a lot of calls. Our team has a lot of work. And as you see, uh, we grow from five members in 2019 to 60 members in our team uh, with, limit, uh, with different functions and uh, the developers on the gateway. We also have a Java part for the mapping orchestration, some architects, analysts, testing. Um, and we, we, we deliver almost 20 projects in a quarter and 30 APIs. But we, we we, as a team, we, we, we went in a little bit in a snowball effect. Uh, the demand of the, of the business was very high and the snowball is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And, and we, we were not able to stop that snowball. And we were also not able to do some things really on platform level. And that's why we needed a change uh, um, and needed to reorganize the way of working. Uh, and how did we do that is uh, to offload part of our work uh, to really stop that snowball. Um, and the things that we offloaded is um, really the API contract design. And also, of course, by la launching the developer portals, developers have also uh, more self-service and, and, and more a view uh, on the catalog of the APIs. Uh, of course, uh, our team still uh, provides advice with the quality reviews. And of course, uh, you need some governance uh, when you offload work. You still need some governance and policy enforcements of that API design. And for now, at uh, the implementation, really the development of Java and API Connect, that stays in the team. So that means we can finally relax, go on, on holidays. Um, 
but of course, uh, the other development teams must work harder. So yeah, how, how do we deal with that? Eh? Because there is really an impact of offloading effort to the to other teams at eh, the more business clusters eh, because they need more time. But next to that, we believe that, that offloading that API design brings them flexibility and eh? they do not depend on the integration team to deliver the API design. They can, they can see their own planning and, of, and we also believe in efficiency. Because today for API design, you should have some business knowledge. You should know the processes, the way the business works. Uh, and, and that knowledge is already in those teams uh, of the business. So we, we as a team don't need to really go into that deep in the business knowledge. But of course, yeah, it, it, it's extra effort for the development teams. And what's the most important thing is that they, some teams select the knowledge of API design. So this is something where we really worked on. Uh, to have coaching for those teams and, and to get that knowledge in the teams, because actually that's why we did the analysis part first centrally, uh, because we believed that the knowledge of API design should be central. <clears throat> so uh, that's where we become more a center of excellence as a team, where we uh, support other teams, we give advice, and we also provide them documentation. And of course, as I said, you need some standards. Uh, if you expose APIs to partners, uh, yeah, you really need some standards about API design. And that's why we also today still have a review process in place when other teams do API designs that we do a small review uh, so that to check if the guidelines and standards were followed. And next to that, of course, we, 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 we are in the support modus uh, to help them. So I want to um, tell you a bit about how we implemented uh, this center of excellence approach. And actually very early on in the process, we realized we had to re reassess who is our customer. In the past, we've always been um, considering the business as our customer. But in this new approach, we actually uh, should change that point of view to our customers that is the other development teams. And actually, if we look at our sprint deliverables, uh, so what we deliver uh, is actually valuable to the other development teams, less so towards business. And also when we are unable to meet our uh, goals, it's the development teams which are affected. So we found that actually, this uh, concept of having the development teams as our customer really made sense. And that means we have to uh, think a lot more about those development teams as we go forward. We have to make it easy for them. So we've said, we're going to give you all this extra work in, in uh, designing the, the contracts. And it's important that we also make it as easy as possible for them. And it, this means we need to build for them an ecosystem of tools that they can use in order to make them their life easier. So I've listed a, a whole bunch here. I want to go into uh, detail for a few of them. And the first is the documentation. So at FedNot, we already had documentation, but it was documentation for use within our team. So uh, the information was there, but the way it was structured, uh, the way it was explained was all very directed at our own team. But this information needs to be given to other teams now. So we had to restructure uh, and uh, redesign the way we gave that information so we spent a lot of effort in uh, doing that in Confluence. So at FedNot, we use Confluence for it. Um, and we've created a, a new a documentation which is targeted at those other teams. It is easier to understand, less technical, 
uh, in some cases so that they can really um, understand the material that we are trying to explain to them. Another tool we're trying uh, to make their life easier with uh, is called Spectral. It's uh, a linting tool for uh, YAML or for uh, open API contracts. So it will point out when you break some of the rules. And the, the strength of this tool is we can define custom rules that we have specifically for FedNode. So if we say we want uh, our fields to have this kind of casing, so it should be lower camel case, for example, that's a rule that we can define in this tool and a whole host of other rules that we have. And by giving this uh, linting tool to our developers, that means that they can see immediately whilst they are developing the contract, whether they have any mistakes, whether there's anything that contradicts the rules and the standards that we have at FedNot. This cuts down on their uh, uh, effort in order to comply to our standards. They don't have to contact us continually. They don't have to remember all of the rules. The, they can see immediately in their IDE. They can even get some tips on how to correct any issues they have. And that really makes it easy for them to create the contracts. We also have a gray log at FedNot. So it's uh, similar to the ELK where you replace Kibana with gray log. Uh, it's a centralized logging tool. And we want to plug into this. It's a request that has come from the developers they really want more insight into what's happening on the API gateway level. So we're busy implementing this where we can uh, put our logging into Greylog so that those developers can get those insights that they're asking for. Part of that, for example, is uh, also enforcing a, a global transaction ID so that we can see how messages are uh, traveling through all of our various systems. So, yeah, what are, uh, are the next steps for FedNot? I hope with this, we can really stop that snowball. That's one thing. Uh, and that we have some time to improve uh, yeah, the service we give to our consumers. One thing which is important is to have uh, next to monitoring, all, uh, next to logging, sorry, also the monitoring part to really proactively see when APIs are down. Um, and also to have KPIs about your APIs because they're products as well. And, and you sh should have some insights uh, on strategic level. Okay, which products do, do we uh, go further with and, and invest in? And, and which products or API do we maybe stop? Um, and next to that, we also want to go even further in automation of deployment. And an idea or a dream we have is that in, in the future, even an analyst or a developer of another team can do a small contract update of an existing API uh, if we implement that much of automation. Uh, and also in testing, uh, we would really love uh, to implement some automated testing uh, of, of uh, our APIs. Um, uh, today, uh, uh, the setup of our API Connect and our gateways is on-prem, uh, on-premise, and something we want to evaluate as well is, is yeah, FedNot is, is, is more uh, moving to a hybrid structure. Is it a good idea to also uh, have a cloud gateway? So this is something that we want to evaluate. Uh, and next to that, um, we still have uh, at FedNot today two different um, platforms. We have the API Connect and we still have services on a data power. Uh, and this is something that we would like to do as well next year is to migrate all our services or APIs to the same platform. Um, so I hope that we can stop the snowball effect and that we can find a good balance between doing business projects and doing strategic projects, but also have some more time for those uh, next steps that we have in mind. So I, I would like to thank you all. Um, 
I think now, uh, yeah, we will look at the questions in the Q&A. Yes. So thanks, Jolene uh, and Edwin, uh, for this great presentation. We already have three, uh, and I would have to say quite interesting questions. For all the others that are um, watching this session, feel free to start uh, posting your questions. I will be the moderator for today, like always. Um, I will do them in uh, chronological order. So the first uh, question is coming from Christophe. And uh, his question is basically, uh, are these schedules still relevant in API design, uh, build, deploy, um, in a way where we have backwards compatibility, semantic versioning, zero downtime deployment? So how, how do you balance those two, basically? That's a bit the question of Christoph. Yeah, so I heard semantic versioning. That's actually a policy we adopted during this project. Um, basically, we, we made a policy for ver versioning. So how many versions of a product are we allowed to have? We don't want to end up with a million, but one is also too few. So we uh, the policy we have adopted is to have two versions plus one deprecated version maximum. Uh, and that allows flexibility towards developers, but reduces the number of versions that we have to support. Okay, and then um, the second question uh, about the frequency of changes to the data models. How are you tackling that in FatNut? And um, it's maybe a question for Jolien. How compliant are you with the data models used in other countries? Well, data is, is a track at FatNot that is just starting now eh, because before yeah, we, we did not have common data models at FatNot. So this is really also something new for FatNot. Uh, and it's, it's a complete other track that uh, it will start uh, yeah, the coming months to really get uh, yeah, uh, clusters or teams thinking about data models and that everyone uses the same data model. So I think that's the first step to have a data model within FedNot. And then indeed we, we should check with other companies, but we're not that far yet in, in those data models, uh, but it's really something that we, we, are, are, we need to do and we will do in the coming, coming months and years. Yeah. Uh, then moving on to the next question, uh, what, uh, what are the critical factors, criteria uh, that you considered during the AP, creating the API development guidelines at the Center of Excellence? And how are you doing the reviews before or after the implementation? And then going on, how do you measure the effectiveness of those uh, reviews? So it's a quite ambitious question. Uh, Edwin, I think this is for you. Yeah, so previously uh, reviews were done basically manually. So um, we had our standards documented, but in order to you know, check whether a new API uh, met those standards, we would have uh, an analyst read through the list, go through the API, and then manually check, well, do they match? And that's where we uh, opted for uh, Spectral. So we don't only make that available to the development teams, of course, we use it internally as well. And it really does a lot of that work for us. It doesn't do everything, so we do still have some manual checks to go through. Um, but it really has minimized the amount of work and really reduced the, the number of mistakes that make it all the way to uh, production. Okay, uh, and then um, I think, Aline, that's a question for you from Jeremy. Uh, do you plan to offer an external integration uh, for the Start My Business application? So I assume Jeremy is uh, asking about an open API uh, capability for that. Eh? Well, for now, uh, we are looking more for an ecosystem uh, because now it's only a platform between notaries and the citizens. And we for sure look for partners uh, who, who can contribute to that ecosystems. An example can be accountants. Um, and it's, yeah, 
we're still looking into that, but it's really a plan for next year to, to make it more an ecosystem, also for the citizen, that there are also other partners or federation involved in this. But really making it open, yeah, it will be a kind of partnership 